What's up? I am going to be doing a uh, tutorial on um, how using key shapes can help you create a new uh, sparkle or give you a new angle on tired chords. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining. Um, again, I'm going to be doing a mini tutorial on how using different key shapes can help add sparkle to tired chords. And it's a process that um, I use constantly in all of my songs. And uh, I'm, hello, hello. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. Um, changing key shapes is a, is a technique that I use in all of my songs. And it allows me to um, play using the chords that feel best to my hands and using the chords that... I can uh, sparkle it up with. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I'm supposed to be doing my fucking taxes right now, and that makes me want to peel my toenails back. So I am... What's up, Anthony? I am uh, procrastinating, and you guys are my enablers. So thanks very much for fucking up my life. I am glad you're here, though. <laughs> uh if anybody else has got taxes to do tonight and uh, you don't want to be doing it, hang here because we are going to be doing a mini tutorial on how to use key shapes to add sparkle or a new angle on your tired chords. I did. I got so <laughs> I got so serious when I was talking about taxes because I feel that weight on my heart. Um, yeah, so Anthony, show us those chords for the new tune, my boy. So yeah, I've got a new song out with my artist project. It's called Haunted Continents. Um, so that project is a folk, uh, alt country, you know, indie folk project. If um, if you want to hear those tunes, just write the the letters H. Just write H C in the comments, and I'll have my internet robot send you a link to the tunes. I'd love for you to hear it. It's a song called. Um, four star mental vacation and it's about using whatever means you deem necessary to just chill the fuck out and uh take it easy when the whole world feels like it's uh sprinting headfirst at a brick wall so thank you yeah just the letters hc right back to back and uh i'll send you a link to the tunes so um the the song four star mental vacation is a perfect example of using key shapes and um so what is a key shape uh, we will I'll, I'll get to that so a key shape um, is uh, yeah we'll get there so basically what it means is um, so my my new tune it goes like this all right so that is really an A chord and an E chord up to a B chord. All right, so again, this is an A. That's an E. I'm just going back and forth between A to a, to a B. Yeah, I only really know basic chords. All right. Perfect, and this is for you because this allows you to play basic chords but in other locations on your neck so that they sound fucking cool. Um, there are a million songs that you listen to and you're just like, God, why does that sound so good? And you look it up and it's just chords that you know, but they don't sound like the chords you play. So um, if anybody is just joining us, we are going to be looking at how key shapes can add, uh, can give you a new angle on tired chords. And um, if you want to hear that in action, my original music, uh, just write the word HC or just the letters HC in the comments and my internet uh, minions will send you a link. Um, so let's start from the beginning and let's talk about a couple concepts. Number one, chords can be played in multiple places on the neck. So. Thank you for the HC. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, concept one. Chords can be played in multiple places on the neck. This is a G chord. But you can play a G chord in a lot of different places. You can play it here. 
you can play it uh, you can play it here you can play it here you can play it here here all different places so there are many places that you can play a chord on the neck okay so that's the first thing uh, that we need to talk about the second thing that we need to talk about is that there is a difference between chord shapes and concert pitch chords and what that means is this is a G chord as we know it and if I was to play that G chord with a piano player that was also playing a G it would sound the same but say I was to put on a capo on fret 2 for example and play a G chord now that's no longer a concert pitched G chord that is actually an A chord so if we were to play this G shape while a piano player were to play an actual G on the piano it wouldn't it wouldn't match up so there are two two uh, two concepts here we've got chord shape so this is a G chord shape but it's a different concert pitch all right so in the open chords we know like G C D they happen to be the shape of a G chord a G chord shape and they also happen to match with the fact that they are also a concert G pitch hit me up with questions in there if you got any um, I know some of this stuff can be a little bit funky to talk about. Um, so again, we've got chord shapes and concert chords, concert pitch chords, okay? So they're two different things. Sometimes they align, like when you play an open G, this is a G chord shape, and it's also a, chord, a G concert pitch. All right, cool. Justin says, makes sense? Nice. All right, so um, the next thing we need to talk about is that keys are grouping of notes or chords that yeah just a one three five that's right Justin so the different the different um, like if I was to play a G chord here that's the one three and the five of the G major scale but if I was to play that G chord here it's a different chord shape but it's still a concert G chord and it's still just using the one three and five of the G scale so yeah awesome Okay, so the next, the next, um, hey everybody, thank you for coming through. Uh, for those of you just joining, we are talking about how key shapes can add a cool new angle to, uh, can, can add a cool new angle to tired chords. And so Sam John Martin says, some people play chords with just two notes on different places on the fretboard. How do we understand that? Um... Sam, John Martin, can you, uh, some people play different chords with just two notes on a fret. Yes, because there are multiple places where you can play, uh, for example, you can play a G here, or here, or here, or here, uh, all over the neck. There are multiple places where you can play, um, the same note. So you can play that same note or any combination of the same notes all over the neck. It's kind of like uh, trying to think of an analogy. Like a piano, well, I mean, it is a musical analogy. A piano has uh, multiple octaves. Yeah, so, oh, power chords. Is that what you, is that, okay, yeah, Anthony's saying maybe it's power chords. Is that what you mean, Sam? Um, yeah, so... These are chords that are that are transmutable, translatable, transmovable, um, uh, and you can just move that shape anywhere on the neck. Those are called power chords. And I'll do a, I could do a tutorial on that sometime too. It's a, a fun way to just feel like free and liberated. Um, and so. Yeah, so Justin says, sometimes things are implied, I think, but to have a full chord, you need to do the one, three, five of the key. Yeah, that's right. Um, for it to be a triad, a major triad. And uh, Anthony says, a chord technically wouldn't be two notes only, except power chords. Right, yeah, so they call those... Um, fuck, what do, they, what do they call them? Dyads, 
right? It's like a, a chord with only two uh, two notes in it. But you're right, it doesn't have tonality. It doesn't have a major or a minor designation. You need the three in order to do that. But uh, so keys are groups of notes or chords that sound like they belong together. They have a sense of magnetism. Uh, like for example, the key of G has a G, an A minor, a B minor, and a C, and a D, an E minor, and an F sharp diminished, and then a G. Yet, yeah, no worries. Stay in touch. Um, thank you for the uh, interest in hearing my tunes. So yeah, if anybody joining wants to hear the new song I dropped today, I use all of the stuff that I, I teach uh, to help make those songs. Just drop HC in the comments and I'll have, uh, I'll send a DM to you. Um, okay, so keys are groups of chords or notes that sound like they have a sense of belonging together. I can play any of those chords in any order. feel like they belong together. They have a sense of magnetism. Whereas if I played a chord that was outside of the key, you would immediately notice. Like right there, it's like C sharp major, that's not in the key of G, you can hear it. It, it violates that sense of magnetism. You can create cool music by disrupting people's expectations and going outside of keys. I'm not making a statement on whether or not there's a right or wrong, but that's what a key is. Um, so the chords in a particular key, you'd call that the, the key shape. So the chords within the key of G, when I play it in the concert pitch location, that is the key shape of G. The key shape of G contains a G chord, the, the G chord shape, the A minor chord shape, this B minor chord shape, the C chord shape, the D chord shape, E minor chord shape. Now, if I was to move that up two frets, I could still play the key shape of G, but I would be in a different concert pitch key. So I could play the G chord shape, the A minor chord shape, the B minor chord shape, C chord shape, D chord shape, E minor chord shape. And we don't talk about the F sharp diminished. Sorry, Anthony. <laughs> okay, so that is what key shape is. And if the key shape that you're playing in or writing in down here doesn't inspire you, you can change the key shape, but keep the same concert pitch. And that is what so many writers are doing. They are changing the key shape, but maintaining the same concert pitch, okay? So that's what I'm doing in my new song. Um, the chords actually go A, I'm in the key shape of E when I wrote it. Just back and forth, E to A. Here I go again, slipping away for star mental vacation. Get the hell right out of Pelham Bay without getting A off the floor, E. All right, so I'm playing in the key shape of E using the A chord shape and the E chord shape. Now, when I wrote it, I was like, that just doesn't feel like it's got a vibe to me. I need something new. I need something that feels like just a little bit more interesting. So I think, and I'll go about, how, I'll, go on, I'll, I'll talk about how to do this in just a second, but my thought process is what other key shapes can I use to make that feel more interesting to me? And so hit me up if you got any questions about this. Thank you, everybody that's joining. For those of you that are just joining, we're talking about how key shapes can add a new angle to tired chords and, and in, sort of breathe life into something that felt um, uh, that felt uh, kind of tired. So Justin says, question, capo on two, and you start with an A major, but it's concert pitch C major. A piano play, a player would do a C major accompaniment. Justin, yes, 100%, you got that, okay? So what Justin is saying is we want to play uh, We want to play in the key of C major. We want to play in the concert pitch of C major. But uh, the key shape of, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, um, 
the chord shape of A is something that he likes and wants to use the chord shape of A and um, in his playing. So, uh, but actually, Justin, so just to, just to, um, just to clarify, it would be capo on fret three, not cape, not fret two, okay? So if you played an A major shape with your capo on fret, uh, on fret three, the A shape would create C because this is a C note. There's your A shape. Yeah, okay, cool. Exactly, you've got it. Okay, so uh, when I was writing Four Star Mental Vacation, I wrote it down here in the key shape of E. An E chord shape, an A chord shape, and uh, this B bar chord, which is an A chord shape raised up two frets. And I was like, that just doesn't inspire me. I need something that sparkles. So I thought, where else can I play this chord shape? And so I moved it all the way up to the ninth fret. And I like the key, I like the chord shape of C. I like the chord, I like the key shape of G. Um, and so that's where I moved it. So now this is still an A chord to an E chord to a B chord, but it sounds like this. Okay, as opposed to... Nothing wrong with this, but it just didn't have what I was looking for. An A chord shape to an E chord shape to a B. So I moved it all the way up, still maintained the same concert pitch, but changed the key shape. Yeah, I'm taking me a holiday, the weed is like a station. Just stay hidden and I'm miles away, just float. So that's the gist of it. Uh, Anthony said, is there a, pneuma is there a pneumatic uh, phrase to help you remember the locations of the new key shapes? Is it caged? It's caged, yeah, caged. Uh, so if anybody's joining us, we're talking about how key shapes can add sparkle and give a new angle to tired chords. And um, so caged is the system of how uh, you can play the same concert pitch chord in five different shapes. There's the C shape, there's the A shape, there's the G shape, there's the E shape, and then there's the D shape. Caged. And so that is the, that's the basis of all of this, is that those are your different key shapes and um, the chords that you can choose from, they all, ba they're, they all go based on that rotation. That's a whole other conversation. But, so, uh, let's talk about like, why would you want a different chord shape? Uh, so Justin says, don't have to touch on this right now, but can you talk about your finger picking pattern? Yeah, sure, man. I'll definitely do that. Um, I'll, uh, hit me up in the DMS or something and I'll, um, uh, I can make you a little video of it or I'll do a tutorial of it, but that might take me a minute. So just hit me up in the DMS. I'll send you a, uh, a, a video. Um, and, and if anybody wants to hear the tune that I'm talking about, just write the word HC in the comments and, uh, I'll send you a link to the new song. And it, uh, with all the original music that I make with my project Haunted Continents, I'm using the same, uh, techniques and stuff that I teach on this page. So I, I think you'll like it. If you're here because you're a subscriber, um, it will at least hold some value for you. So, uh, Drop drop that in the comments. Nice, thanks, dude. Um, so, why would you want to use a different key shape? Uh, I've got my notes here of like what I'm talking about. So I I, I tend to just like I tend to uh, to just blab and and go on a tangent if I don't have guidelines. So if I'm looking over here, it's not because I'm reading texts from my pals. Um, okay, so why would you want to choose a new key shape? Because Within the key shape, 
there are chord shapes that contain unique ornamentations and um in in the chord shapes have their own sort of like inherent timbre and what i mean by that is like take a uh, a c chord for example the c shape i love the c shape because i like to do the inversion where i can put my where i can bring the fifth of the chord down to the bass because sometimes i'm doing that country bounce Or sometimes I'm just laying down a fucking heavy C chord. But that key, sh the, 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 the chord shape of C offers that unique ornamentation. And it also has this hammer on that I love. I use that constantly. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, C chord is huge in metal too. Um, so, uh, or how about, let's say, a D chord. It's got this... Or... Those little ornamentations. You can't do those this exact same way with other chords. Or how about this inversion of a D? With this thumb. So each of these chords has their own unique timbres and their own inherent ornamentations. And so if I played a song in the key shape of A, I'm sorry, key shape of E, where it's A, E, A, E, B, that doesn't contain any of the ornamentations that I really love in the C chord or the D chord. And so if I know I like those ornamentations, I can change the key shape but keep the concert pitch and I move it up here and now that A shape chord that was down here it's still an A chord up here but now I'm using a C chord shape which contains the ability to do these ornamentations exactly the same way down here. Just sounds different, right? <laughs> Real guitar players don't use capos, nonsense. Yeah, fuck that. I use a capo constantly. So um, for those of you that are just joining us, we're talking about how to use key shapes to alter your chord progressions to give them a new sparkle, to, to approach them from a different angle, to, to breathe some new life into them. Um, so we just discussed the reason why you might want to use different key shapes, because they contain different chord shapes inside of them, and each of those chord shapes has their own unique ornamentations and timbres. And... Um, so in order, so how do we do that? So you just gotta think, if this is an A chord, this is an E chord, this is a B chord, then we know we're in the key of E because the A is our four chord, the E is our one chord, the B is our five chord. All right, so if I were to change the key shape, I would just find any one of these chords in a different, in a different, in a different chord shape, but in the same, concert pitch, okay? So if I'm playing an A here, I can find another A by going to, let's say, here. All right, so if this becomes the four chord, this is still the four chord, but now we also need the one chord, which is our E, and here's our five chord. All right, so that becomes the key shape of C. All right, that didn't do it for me. I didn't decide that that was the right way to do that. But all I did was think, okay, if I know the chord numbers sort of like, it, what do they call that? Like the Nashville system? Um, where you designate chords as numbers within a scale in a key, it really helps to know that. So 
the four chord was is A, the one chord is E, the five chord is B. So I find any one of the I find any one of those chords in a different concert pitch location with a different shape. So um, what I did was in the song Four Star Mental Vacation, and if anybody wants to hear it, just drop the letters HC back to back, HC in the comments, and I'll send you a link so you can hear it. Uh, and you can hear this in action, okay? So um, I thought E, uh, A, E, B, it's fucking just like, it was just boring to me in that moment. There are times when that's going to be the right, you know, shapes to use. But I thought, okay, where else can I play this A chord? With that's got some ornamentations that I really like. And I thought, I like the C chord, so how can I play a C shape, but have it be a concert A chord? So if this is an A, okay, I'm sorry. So if the, if, if the C shape is what I, my ultimate goal is to play, uh, th Richard, thank you for uh, dropping the letters HC. If anybody else wants to hear that tune, just write HC in the comments. I'll send you a link. Um, so if I know I want to play an A concert pitch in a C chord shape, look at your C chord shape in in the version you know this note right here on your a string that's your root note that's your c so if i could place this note where there's an a then i'll be playing the concert pitch of a but in the chord shape of c there it is there's the a on my a string it's the 12th fret it's the octave okay so that's what i was like all right i'm uh also doing double duty, watching my, watching my four month old sleep. I hope she stays asleep while I do this live. Oh, my wife just texted me and said she'll watch her. That's good. She was asleep. I'm not being a uh, terrible dad here. <laughs> so, anyways, I thought I want to play an A chord, but I want to use a C shape. So I go to my C chord. And I recognize that this is my root note right here. And all I got to do is put the root note, which in the C chord shape is the C. And I, all I got to do... You hear that, baby? Oh, okay. Good, my wife is going in there. But I'm going to have to call this in just a second. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to move this up so that the, the bass note, the root note lands on an A and I play my C chord shape and I put my capo where the nut would be in the key in the C chord shape. There we go. That's an A. I know, Anthony, I got to get on that sleep training regiment. These kids are running us ragged. <laughs> so, there we go. This is an A chord in a C chord shape. And so then I just go through the rest of my chords and I do the same process. So in if the A is my one chord and the E, I'm sorry, if the A is my five chord and the E is my one chord, then that means if I go up and my C shape now becomes my four chord, the numbers don't change, but the key, the chord shapes do, then my one chord is going to be the G because C is the four in the key shape of G. So I moved my progression from the key shape of A, sorry, key shape of E, to the key shape of G. But it's the same concert pitch. All right. That's the fucking gist. Thank you so much for hanging. Thanks for all of the questions. Um, if you guys want to check this out, I'll be posting it as a replay. And um, for anybody that is interested in hearing how key shapes can add some sparkle to music, um, I definitely encourage you just drop the letters HC in the comments and I'll shoot you a DM with a link to, um, to my new tune, uh, Four Star Mental Vacation. And uh, you can hear what that's all about. And if you are a follower of this page, uh, I think you'll dig that music because I use all the same techniques that I share, uh, but you can kind of hear it in action. And um, 
Yeah, I'm so grateful for you, and uh, you provided a wonderful distraction while I should have been doing my fucking taxes, and uh, yeah. Ah, new song is rad. Thank you. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, oops. Thank you, Jake. Um, yeah, so guys, have a great one. Let me know if you got any questions, uh, comments, DM, whatever, carrier pigeon. Just send them to me any way you possibly can. And uh, I would love to uh, be in touch, get to know you better. I've had really the honor of meeting a lot of you guys through the um, – through the free 15 minute lessons. And, um, it's just a, it's a real privilege to be able to talk face to face with you. And like, now I feel like I'm buds with you guys. We're like DMing and random stuff. Uh, and it's, it's a good, it's a good vibe. So, um, if, uh, I believe that I have it still set up. Yeah. So if you, if you comment the, the number 44, I'll send you a link on how to do, how to set up a free lesson and uh Anthony's here, Jake's here. Uh there might be other people here. They'll they'll tell you it's it's not it's not a sales call. It's just really that to get to know each other and to talk about any hurdles you might be having. So, um nice Justin. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um so guys, I'm going to sign out. Have a great one and I will see you next time. <laughs>